Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the sit down. I'm DJ Sixsmith, hanging out with Devin Steele, former NFL doing? player. What's going on? How you doing? Great to see you. I see you too. So you're here in New York. Got a new book. Yeah. Life after the NFL. Got your foot surgery going on. Still going through the injuries. Yeah. So this is an injury from back in the Texans days. Yeah, well, I got hurt playing against the Titans. So mm. I was going against a double team. I ended up um, having a Liz Frank injury, having a surgery then, and then I had to get it fixed again. Well, we were talking off camera. Just right. your life was totally structured as an yeah. NFL player, as a college player. Right. And now life is just all about you. So right. what's the transition been like between being an NFL player and now just being your own man and being a dad full time? No, it, it was tough. I think a lot of people can relate to that, whether, you know, they had a job or a relationship and they got laid off or they broke up with their boyfriend or girlfriend. It's tough to start over, right? But you try to take the lessons that you learned from that long relationship with your employer or with your significant other and allow it to create a new beginning for yourself. So starting this book, writing this book and getting it out to the world is part of me making that transition into my life after football. And I think what's awesome about your story and Leah's story is that you guys have used your platform to help people all around the world, right. and this book is the next part of that. So mm -hmm. you were saying before, it felt like a long time that it, it took did. to write this book. It so did. why was it the right time to write this book, and what was it like putting it all out there? You know, I was inspired one day to put this book out there. I never had an intention on, you know, writing a book about my life, about what I happened to go through with Leah. But I felt like people needed to hear this story. The amount of people who reach out to me on Instagram and ask for advice, you know, I try to write everybody back, but there's so many messages that I thought putting it in a book would really give people a playbook to get back into the game of life with whatever struggle they're facing. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think it's really interesting because you have some time to look back on things now. And, right. you know, emotionally, you kind of talked about your vulnerability in that moment. Mm -hmm. And you're never prepared for something like that right. when your daughter becomes sick. But what are some of the things that you look back on it now and you're proud of the way you handled some things? And what are some things that you would do a little bit differently? Yeah, writing this book was really therapeutic, just going back and reliving, you know, some of those moments and putting it down on the paper and being as transparent as I can so that people can really see themselves in my struggle. You know, I'm really glad that I gave Leah's battle with cancer a purpose because I believe when you give your struggles a purpose, when you give your life a purpose, it's harder to give up because you understand why you're doing what you're doing. But one thing that I regret is not being vulnerable enough in front of Leah, not allowing myself to cry in front of her because I thought I had to be strong for mm -hmm. her in order for her to be strong. And when we were writing this book, I found out that a lot of the times when I was getting off of FaceTime with her and I was breaking down and crying, she was also breaking down and crying when we hung up the phone. So I really wish that I would have allowed myself to be more vulnerable so we could have just sat on the phone crying together. Yeah, no doubt about it. And I think God puts us through different journeys in our lives. Mm -hmm. And obviously you and Leah have had this journey, but right. how have you guys grown emotionally just over the last couple of years? Where's your relationship at now with everything? You know, our relationship has already always been great. From the day that she was born, we always had a close relationship. You know, that's my firstborn. And I love that girl to death. And I think that having that bond with her, having that relationship with her is what carried us through this battle. So we just kept that same relationship. I don't, to be honest, I don't think that our relationship could have got better. It just exposed our relationship to the world. Yeah, it's a beautiful relationship. Right. And you guys also have faith at the center of everything. Right. So how has faith powered you through the best times in your life and also, you know, the struggles in your life as well? Yeah, so I didn't really have a, a strong foundation um, or a strong relationship with God uh, for a lot of years in my life. But when I was going through a lot of struggles with the Cincinnati Bengals, my second year in the NFL, I just felt like my world was crashing on me, right? I had dislocated my elbow against the Lions. I fought back for that in five weeks, and then two weeks later, I ended up having back surgery. Mm. A couple of weeks after that, I almost died from blood clots in my lungs, and my wife decided that we should get back into church because things just weren't going right in my life. So we ended up getting baptized, and I thought that things were gonna get better, that my dream of playing in the NFL and having an impact was about to take off. But two months later, Leah got diagnosed with cancer, so I had another battle ahead of me. And I often questioned my faith early on because I had just got baptized two months earlier. I didn't understand why God was allowing this to happen to my daughter after I just gave my life to him. But I realized eventually that, you know, this wasn't God allowing this to happen to my daughter, but he was showing us that she had cancer because she had cancer for a long time. She had stage four cancer, and we never saw it before. We never knew about it. And this gave us an opportunity to do everything we could to save my daughter's life. And I think that's a really important point because, you know, whether it's getting baptized or just being introduced to faith, some people just think that's going to fix everything. Right. And all of a sudden you're exposed to something totally different, right. but that just makes you cling to God even more exactly. so. So how have you deepened your faith over the last couple of years? What are things that you're doing in your life to do that? 
To be honest, I just don't question, you know, anything that happens to me anymore. Like when I fought back, when I was fighting for Leah's life, right, and we saved her life, she went into remission. I went, I got picked up by the Texans and OTA started off great. I had a chance of making the starting lineup for the first mm -hmm. time in the NFL and I was excited. And then I ended up getting hurt the first day of training camp, you know, and I fought back from that because I refused to allow my dreams to be gone once again. But the third game of the season, I ended up having a Liz Frank injury playing against the Titans. And it was crazy because when I went home, I was still smiling. Mm -hmm. And my, my family thought I was crazy, right? They thought <laughs> I was trying to hide my depression from going through everything I went through with Leah to now battling another injury. Right. But for me, I was able to see what God brought us through with Leah battling cancer. So I knew that this injury was going to bring something good. The outcome was going to be good. And if I didn't get injured when I did, this book wouldn't have been written. Right. Because I was inspired after I woke up from surgery uh, and laying on the couch in my living room. And if I was still playing football, then I wouldn't have been worried about this book. But that just goes to show you that sometimes life is working for you and not against you. Yeah, no doubt. And you realize that football was a huge part of your life, but right. it didn't define you. Yeah, and no. you're going to be just fine without it. Right. And you're experiencing that now. And I right. think a lot of guys in the league, they're so focused on everything on the field, they're not necessarily thinking about life after football. So, right. you know, with your injuries, it seems like you always had that plan for the next thing after right, football. Because I, I suffered two major injuries back to back at Penn State. So I knew that football can be taken away from me in the blink of an eye, and I needed to have a plan. So it was easier to make that transition because I don't believe that, you know, the NFL is a career, but it's an opportunity, and that opportunity doesn't last as long for some people as it does for others. Yeah, not for long. No, <laughs> no, not at all. So when you think about your career, I mean, you had it all. You had the injuries, you're bouncing around. Mm -hmm. Like, that that's the real NFL. It's not right. the 10, 15 years. But mm -hmm. what was the most surprising thing to you just about the whole NFL experience? Um, to be honest with you, the only great memory that I have, right, the thing that really spoke to me in the NFL that I didn't know before is the, the brotherhood and the camaraderie um, around the league, right? It's a, it's a competitive league. We're here to win games uh, for our team, for our, our owners, for the city, for everybody who supports the team. But to watch people really put that secondary when it came to my family and my mm -hmm. daughter battling cancer and they really ro rallied around us and supported us through that, it really spoke to me. It showed me a side that I never knew the NFL had, and I'm pretty sure a lot of fans didn't know that the NFL really had a heart the way that it showed. And I think Marvin Lewis is a prime example of that. Yeah, you know, exactly. People love to knock his playoff record, but there's a guy that provided for you and your family yeah, in a big exactly. way. So mm -hmm. how did he change your life in that way? He just allowed me to be a father first. Like, I, I knew I didn't want to be in Cincinnati mm -hmm. when I was, but I needed to be there for my daughter. And Marvin allowed me, he gave me the opportunity to put my daughter first before football because that was a time in my life where I felt like it was a hit and miss. Like some days I can go out there and play, some days I was on the field crying, mm -hmm. right? And I was walking out of meetings because I couldn't hold it together mentally. And Marvin understood that and he gave me every opportunity to be there for my daughter. You said you could only watch like three games this year. So oh, yeah. what was the hardest part about just trying to watch football again? Knowing that I could still do it. Mm. You know, because when I came back from this Liz Frank injury, I, I went with the Jets. I got signed to the Jets, and I probably did it a little bit too early, but I was pro I wanted to prove to you myself. hungry. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to prove to myself that this injury wasn't going to stop me from living my dreams. And I got invited to the camp about two weeks into training camp, and I probably had about seven plays with the Jets during the preseason, and I had two sacks and then I ended up getting released. But that just showed me that I still had it left in the tank, but it wasn't necessarily good for me because every time I got off the practice field, every time I finished the game and I would go back to my hotel room, I would feel like I wanted to cut my foot off because I was uh. in so much pain. And when I realized that, I knew it was time to walk away because when you read my book, you'll see early on, the only reason why I got into sports is because my dad would take me out to play basketball when I was very young and I fell in love with sports then. And if I continued to beat my body up in the NFL, I felt like I would take the opportunity away from my kids if I wasn't able to take them to the park and play with them. And that's a smart thing. I mean, mm -hmm. you see a lot of guys you played with that can barely walk around, right. that mentally from concussions are still dealing with stuff. Right. And you got a young daughter and yeah, you exactly. want to be a father. So exactly. I give you a lot of credit for just being able to look at your career and just being at peace with it. Because right. a lot of other people would say, oh, I, c I can still do it. I would have, could have, should have. But right. you realize, listen, play to Penn State, made it to the NFL, got to Time do it for a couple of years, right. got to move on. Right. Exactly. So 
Uh, I was reading about you, and it looks like you're going back to school and getting another degree. Right, so yeah. So what are you doing with that? So I've been in school for about a year now. I, I decided to, well, honestly, when I got signed with the Texans, uh, my wife is really into vision boards. Mm -hmm. So she made me create a vision board with her, and on that vision board, I had put that I wanted to go back to get my master's because I do a lot of speaking um, nowadays and I teach people that they have to learn to let go of their past, that yeah. their past doesn't define who they are today and who they would be in the future. And to be honest, I wasn't a great student at Penn State and I used to always make the excuse that school wasn't for me. But to be honest, I wasn't for me because I didn't do everything I could in order to perform at the highest level in the classroom like I was doing on the football field. So I wanted to go back and get my master's in leadership to number one, prove to myself that I was a better student than I was. And number two is I teach a lot of businesses about creating a championship culture mm -hmm. and teaching them the lessons that are in this playbook so that their employees can perform at the highest level. And I understand that communication is only effective when there's understanding. And if I keep speaking to them in football terminology, then Not I won't be as effective. Yeah. So going back and getting my master's, I'm learning business terminology so I can put the two together and really make a better impact. Well, that's awesome how you change. And my fiance just did a vision board too, really? so I may have to get on that. <laughs> she loaded hers with like a bunch of words. You know, some people do like pictures and just yeah. a couple words. That's She's, what I did. She loves words. Printing she, stuff out, just threw glue on it, smacked it <laughs> on the paper. My wife things just look so beautiful and elaborate. I'm just, I don't have time for that. I may have to do one myself. Oh, definitely. That sounds definitely. awesome. So let's talk about Leah. She's mm -hmm. eight years old now, which is incredible. We met her first when she was four years right. old. So how has she grown over the past couple years? And, you know, what's life for her like today? Man, she's, she's grown into a, an amazing young kid. Just to see the maturity that she has right now, her thought process, the way that she looks at life, it's a beautiful thing. And I... I honestly, I can't wait to see her grow up and see what she turns out to be, to see the impact that she has on this world, because I don't even think that she understands the impact she's already had. Yeah. That being eight years old, she has no idea. So that's why I think, you know, the internet, social media is a beautiful thing because we're allowed to keep all those memories. So when she gets older, I can sit her down and scroll through my Instagram and show her the impact that she's made. But to watch her just be able to enjoy her childhood and not have to worry about the hospital anymore, going through chemo, cancer. Now nah, I'm just blessed. Yeah, no yeah. doubt about it. So when people read the book, what's the one big takeaway you want them to have? Right, um, for me it would be no loss is too great to stop your comeback. You know, I faced a lot of struggles in my life and you'll read that throughout the book, but today I remain undefeated because I didn't allow those obstacles to stop me from going to where I wanted to go. If anything, it helped push me to go where I wanted to go and it helped me for when my daughter had cancer to have a mindset that you need to have in order to overcome adversity in your life and people should understand that you know when you have dreams in your life you have to be willing to fight for four quarters and give it everything you have because so many people talk about what they want to do in their life right they talk about having a new year's resolution mm -hmm. but most people fail because they don't have a purpose behind doing what they're doing and they give up too soon right and there was times where I felt like giving up. I feel like every champion, um, every winner in life has had the urge to want to give up and yeah. give up on their dreams. But something deep down inside them, the why continues to push them. And, you know, their desire to be great is bigger than any excuse they could ever have for themselves. So when people have that type of mentality, then the world is theirs. The ultimate story of perseverance. Devin still staying in the game. Devin, yeah. thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. You got it. We'll see you next time here on The Sit Down.